All right. In government, <laughs> let's turn back to government for a second. Uh, what are the principal problem areas? Um, the, one thinks of the intelligence world and the Defense Department as being, you know, secure institutions uh, that spend a lot of money on this, and this is actually their business, national security. Uh, and you don't hear that many, although there are some uh, stories of uh, their being hacked in, uh, uh, in significant ways. Um, is that because that's classified, as Alan was saying, Glenn? Uh, and what are the principal problem areas in government? Uh, are, are certain departments and functions of government a particular concern? Well, I certainly am not going to go into any more specifics than and if you'd all pull out your copy of OMB's report to Congress on the implementation of FISMA. You, that one part of the package everybody got? Okay. Anyway, if you go to our website, we actually describe the uh, pluses, minuses, upsides, downsides in a high-level way. Um, but what we, of course, have are uh, essentially statistical reporting by agencies, CIOs, Mm -hmm. And then a uh, so quantitative reporting by CIOs and a qualitative reporting by inspectors general. And uh, we give them equal weight, <clears throat> let the uh, facts and chips fall where they may. Um, but I want to turn around and the, the, the question I thought you would, would certainly ask Alan is, so sure. since the sky is falling, well, actually, no, he didn't say that. The sky has fallen. <laughs> Unfortunately, this room, the ceiling, uh, the roof withheld the, the impact. What's your solution? Yeah, well, we're going to get to that. <laughs> well, I, I, you know. I honestly don't think somebody should do the kind of crap that I just did if you don't have an answer to that question. I think people who run around just scaring people are, are really doing a bad thing. So we will get to that, right? We are going to get to that. Um, I just thought we'd explore a little bit more before we get to FISMA and whether that's the solution and if not, what the solutions are. A little bit more about um, you know what the situation is out there, uh, uh, and and so maybe uh, Alan or Bruce, you could talk a little bit about the evidence that there are concerted attacks on government systems, and and, and the idea that some of these attacks are state sponsored. That is to say, they're not just individual hackers or Al Qaeda, but they're actually sponsored by China or some other uh, national uh, uh, nation. Uh, or, or uh, in some fashion, state-sponsored? Uh, and if so, where are they originating and what are the objectives? Um, they both know this a lot better than I do, but they'd get shot if they told you. So I will tell you what I can tell you without mm -hmm. a security clearance. Mm -hmm. um, the British government broke the story first. They broke it in June. It, it's on, I gave you the URL on the first slide of Exhibit 2 if you want it. And what they said in sort of quiet, this British understated way is uh, the federal government sites and government contractor sites of us and our allies are being broken into on a continuous basis and it's getting worse and they're stealing military secrets and, and, and that was, they broke it and there was absolute silence on this side of the pond. I mean, you, heard, you could hear a pin drop outside the halls in the Pentagon when that, when that announcement hit because everyone was, was saying... Um, but then in September, we got the data that it was actually a major U.S. problem. Uh, but I want to tell you how they were breaking in because I think it's useful to you to know that – because we're sitting here thinking we got good security, and there are two halves to the security pie. One half is vulnerabilities, the specific technical vulnerabilities in the systems. And they'll use those day in and day out. But as soon as you get most of those fixed, then the people attack becomes the – the, the main attack. And the, the people attack is, I believe, now half of the problem, and it's going to 95 percent. These attacks, these what we think are sure state-sponsored attacks, are both people attacks and vulnerability attacks. The people attacks are called spear phishing. And I just want to ask you a question. I'm going to tell you about an email that came if you're, from your most trusted senior official, the, the person, the DEPSEC, or somebody who actually you really respond to quickly, or, or if you're in a military organization, the colonel who runs that piece of the operation. Somebody who, when he says do it, do it. And the email comes to you and says, hey, we just got early word that Microsoft, there's a big vulnerability in Microsoft operating systems. Um, they gave us early, early news, and, it, uh, and they, they gave us an early patch, so we, you know, we in our agency can get this patch before the public knows about it. Uh, please go to this website and uh, download this patch before you leave work today. Or not please. Go to this website before you leave work today. Download this patch. 
and you look at the you look at the click and it says www.microsoft.com so you know it's okay you click on it you go there it's a real microsoft site it says skip the text download the patch you click on that you download the patch you feel good you go home what just happened to you it's called spear phishing phishing is this thing the way you get the note from eBay or PayPal or the bank that says your account's being closed, please go to the site, fill in the blank. If you don't have an account with PayPal, you don't worry about it. If you do have an account with PayPal, you actually think about it for a second. And then you say, wait a minute, PayPal wouldn't do this. But thousands of people fall for it all the time. That's why they keep, you keep getting the emails. So that's phishing. It goes broadly to everybody. Spear phishing says, let's take your, inst your organization and let's find out the name of somebody senior. And let's spoof, that's the name for, for putting the wrong return address on an email. Let's spoof his address so it looks like it came from Bruce, but it actually came from the bad guys. So that email never came from that senior person. It just looked like it did. And very few people, we actually teach a class on how to find out where it actually came from because it's hard to find out where the email actually came from. It's not something you can just tell everybody to do. But that's not the real problem. When you saw that underlying text that you can click on, it says www.microsoft.com, it wasn't taking you there. The, I, in the, the third slide, on because most people don't know this in the cybersecurity field, it's really scary that cybersecurity people don't know this. It's not taught in awareness classes. The, it, in the HTML that makes that underlying text, there's one line of text that says what you're going to put on the paper and one line of text that says where to go, which you know has to be true because you sometimes see click here, right? So if you can click on click here, the text can't be where you're going, can it? But most people don't understand that. They think if it says www.microsoft.com, you're going to Microsoft. So what happened was you got an email from the wrong person and it sent you to the, to the wrong place. And what do you think happened when you, when you went to that site and downloaded that patch? They put a control system on your computer that they can run to get all of the data. And that program went running around grabbing up, grabbing up data. What we found out in August of last year was that this was hugely impacting the U.S. If you look in the, the fourth slide, this is just one night, I think it was November 1st, that on, at 1023 they hit Fort Huachuca, they broke in and got Fort Huachuca, 119 they got DISA, got in, broke in, stole data, 325 they got the Naval Ocean System Center, at 446 they got the strategic defense installation at Huntsville. That was one night. They'd been doing this for two years and four months, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That was one night. And then the, my friends at the Defense Department said, well, they never got into anything classified. True. But three, two weeks earlier, they had gotten into Redstone Arsenal. And what they took, not classified apparently, was the specs for the aviation mission planning system for Army helicopters and the actual software, Falcon View 3.2 software, that does the flight planning for the Army and the Air Force. No, it's not classified as a useful. And why is this state sponsored? Why isn't it just hackers? Well, the, the, the Chinese have doctrine out. It used to be just two colonels writing this five years ago. Now it's doctrine that China can't win the next war with the United States on conventional measures. They're going to fight it uh, asymmetrically. And cyber is the principal technique. If you're going to fight a cyber war, what's the most powerful you can be? It's own the other guy's computers. Mm -hmm. So that's why we think it's six months. Let's talk about uh, maybe Bruce uh, 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 just for a second about Titan Rain, which is, uh, which was thought by some to origin uh, originate in China, uh, and which did get into military and defense contractor networks, logistics networks, perhaps. Um, why don't you someone tell the audience about a minute about that? Uh, I read about it in the Washington Post. You might. Glenn, will you do it? Uh, I read about it in the Washington Post. This, this, is, this is the put the genie back in the bottle. Remember I said there was silence when the British and this is, The <laughs> stuff I was talking about was Titan yeah. Rain. Okay. When the British announced it, um, nobody wanted to talk about it. Then it got to be public. So if you're DOD and you want to keep people from talking about it, what do you do? You change its name and you classify the new name. So there is no Titan Rain. You can only have read about it in the Washington Post. I see. Okay. Uh, Good. Let's move on to something we can talk about. Yeah, okay. Uh, Am I wrong? Let's move on to something <laughs> we can talk about. <laughs> okay. 